Hello and welcome to a live tutorial on how to develop for and work with the open source pipeline Plex. My name is Alexander Richter, I'm a technical director and also the creator of Plex. Before we dive into the structure, let me share some thoughts and what was my reasoning by creating the open source pipeline Plex. One of the main motivations for creating it was that I gathered all this information over the years on how to develop pipelines and I wanted to share them with you. Because I had the same uh, experience where I started to do pipeline work and didn't know where to search for. The internet was not like capable enough. I had some co-workers, I have some students. So I was looking into everything but never found like the foundation for me. So that is why I created the wiki in the uh, repository where I share also like how to create folder structure, naming conventions, software pipeline and script pipeline. So that was my, my main motivation. My second reason was that I wanted to create a basic, easy to understand concept which allows you to build on and add to. The idea is to create a more of a framework instead of a tool set. This framework allows you to open any software and giving you basic setups and modification and structure on which you can build on without being too deep and complex. And on the other side, not too shallow and ignorant of the need of portability, simplicity and customizability. So let's dive in into the repository and into the folder structure of the pipeline. So when you download Plex, you get this repository and this structure where we have data, executional, image, lib and software. Let's go into data. Data is mainly there for all the configuration files and to set up the software in the beginning. So on one hand, you have the pipeline pi, which creates all the environment variables which is the core of Plex since it is software independent and stays in the um, Windows or operation system um, environment. And the next thing is the pipeline YAML, which um, allows you to do a layered pipeline approach and also to add the uh, user override if you allow this or not, or also to guide which configuration da data you want to use in the project. In the project, you one side have, have all the configuration files per project, so we go into default. Here we have the main two things, especially are the project YAML, where you set up how your project is structured and what are the main information like resolution and paths. And the other one is the software, how your software is structured, which software should be used, which information should be like inputted into the software and how the menu is structured. So these are the main reasons, especially also the project template where I provide a certain file structure for your project. So the other thing in data is the user, which is guided by your login. So if you go into your name, Arichta in my case, there are especially will be a um, log file, which you can open, where like Plex logs everything you do using scripts, logging into software, starting software, it logs this information. So a pipeline developer can uh, look into that and figure out maybe what is wrong or why it doesn't work the way you want to work it. So this is a great opportunity to, to understand what Plex does and user-based concept. The other thing is you can override project data by just putting here, for example, the software YAML in this directory and you will override it if you allow it in the pipeline YAML, um, the project YAML, which is a great opportunity to, to give you a task-based approach or for specific user, specific configuration files. The next thing is the executional, which is just will trigger the pipeline pi in data and open up any software you want in a way of uh, having this batch files instead of uh, doing some Python commands. That's it. The other thing is the images, where it's mostly about labels, buttons, icons, but also about splash screens or like this icons for shelves specific for software, for example. Next thing is um, the lib, 
which is um, provides scripts um, on one side for Plex itself, but on the other side, which are independent from the software. So for example, um, you have your uh, lib data, which gets all the configuration data. You have your lib logs, which creates the logs for your user, but also your um, software pie, which starts Maya, for example, and provides you all these uh, functions like creating a menu and things like that. Your user pie, which is um, which is a class which saves your information for yourself, so the uh, developer can say, "Oh, he is a Richter, so I can do with him that and that." And the tan class, which is just a hub of all the classes, so it provides you connections to all the other classes. The next thing here interesting is the utils, which is, for example, at the moment our desktop, which is a desktop application um, which is independent from any uh, software at all. Or what will, will come with our util, which creates for you a class which you can um, which you can import into your class, and it it will parent your scripts and have giving them a, a standard UI and a standard. Uh, pipeline conform script base. So last but not least is the software folder where um, you, you have all your softwares. So for example, let's go into Maya here, the typical things like plugins, scripts and shelves, but of course also the trigger in it and menu um, pies like the user setup in Maya case. So here you lie down all your pipeline specific uh, plugins and scripts which are specific for specific software. For example, here in Maya case, you put all the scripts for Maya into software Maya. So you separate like for which one is software based and which is independent from software you put in lib. So yeah, that's the overall like view of the Plex. Stay tuned for the other videos of configurations and how to set up new scripts. I hope you enjoy to work with Plex and can create great projects with that. I see you in the next video. Goodbye.